Hey everyone, this is our first lesson in our new unit on iteration or looping. Um, looping is going to allow us to add a tremendous amount of power and flexibility to our programs because it's going to allow them to be able to run parts of our program over and over again. So it's really going to build upon what we learned last unit in using Boolean expressions to control the flow uh, in our program. So we're going to talk about what looping is and we're going to talk about how while loops work uh, and their syntax. And then lastly we're going to talk about a couple of sort of tips and tricks you can use when you're trying to figure out how to write the correct while loop for your program. So looping, as you might expect from the name, uh, is when you have a section in your program that you want to repeat over and over again. Um, if you picture the flow of control in your program, it uh, reaches a loop and starts to go in a circle. It goes down to the bottom, then it comes back up to the top. It goes down to the bottom, back up to the top again. Uh, in both cases, in using loops and using conditional statements that we did in the last unit, um, they both use Boolean expressions, and so you're going to reuse a lot of your skills from that unit. Now, as far as while loops go, there's two kinds of loops that we're going to learn in this unit. The first, time, the first kind is called a while loop. A while loop, as its name suggests, is a loop that runs while some condition is true. So, as an example, let's say you wanted your program to uh, keep asking the user to type in input until they typed in the correct password. Or you wanted your program to find every prime number from 0 to 100,000. Anytime you have a process in your program that needs to repeat, uh, and there's some condition, then you can implement that using a while loop. The way that the loop runs is that we put the condition at the top, and your program is going to evaluate that condition before it runs the code inside the curly braces. And it's only going to run the code inside the curly braces if that Boolean expression is true. And then it's going to run everything in the curly braces, and then at the bottom, uh, when it reaches the closing curly brace, your program will jump back up to the top test the Boolean condition again, and then decide if it's going to run the code again or just skip to the bottom. And this is what that syntax looks like. So you see while, you see a Boolean condition, and then there's a bunch of code inside the curly braces. In some ways, it's simpler than using if, because you don't have to worry about using else if, or end while, or sorry, else while, or else. There's no such thing as else when you're running a loop. Either the loop is running when it's true, or it stops running when it's false. What that means is that uh, potentially every while loop that you write, you really can't necessarily always predict ahead of time how many, uh, how often it's going to run. It might run once, it might run five times, it might run no zero times if the condition is false the first time it gets checked, or it could potentially run forever. So let's talk about that. Sometimes if you make a mistake, most of the time it's because of a mistake. You end up with what's called an infinite loop, which is a loop that runs literally forever, um, or until your program, until you, the user, quits the program. And most of the time it happens because your program uh, doesn't, uh, isn't careful enough to make sure that the Boolean condition becomes false. If the Boolean condition doesn't become false, then you're going to get stuck in an infinite loop. Here's an example. So we want to write a program. The program is supposed to print all the numbers from 1 to 100. But there's a problem, because after we printed our variable num, we forgot to add 1 to it. So it starts off initially equal to 1. And then inside our loop, we don't change it. So we go back up to the top. It's still equal to 1. Is 1 less than 100? Sure. So we'll run our code. Go back up to the top. Still, no, it's still equal to 1. Is 1 less than 100? Sure. Go run through the code. Back up to the top and so on. You can see the problem there. As a rule of thumb, you really should check your while loop carefully to make sure that whatever variables you use in your Boolean condition are being mutated in some way inside the curly braces, because otherwise you've written an infinite loop. Now, apart from worrying about infinite loops, there are a couple of other things that you might want to keep in mind when you're trying to decide how to write your loops. Um, one good strategy, a lot of people, uh, when they first start programming, they don't know how to write their loop. And so one of the strategies I often suggest to people is forget about the loop. 
think about what you want your program to do each time the loop runs and just write that. So in other words, write a program that runs the code in the loop once. Because if you can't figure out what that code is, then you know you have bigger problems than worrying about the loop. So get that code to work and then you can worry about trying to get it to repeat. And look at the code and see which part of it should change the next time through the loop. And chances are um, that variable or those variables are going to be involved in your Boolean condition. Another strategy is that um, when you're running your loop to test it, um, just sort of try to think in your head or hand trace what you expect to happen, particularly with the variables that are um, the ones being used in your Boolean expression. So uh, make a little note in your head of what their starting value is and then see what happens every time through the loop. So in the case of our previous example, if we keep in our head variable name num equal to 1, check to see what happens through the loop. Did it get closer to 100? No, it's still 1, so we have a problem. Or when we fix it, we should see, okay, if it was 1, now it's 2 was 2, now it's 3. So we can see that we're getting closer to eventually making that Boolean condition false. Another strategy which can be really useful if you're having trouble figuring out what to write in the parentheses for your while loop is to try to figure out when the loop is supposed to stop. If you can identify that terminating condition, the thing that is true when the loop should quit, then really all you have to do is put a not in front of it because if you know when the loop is supposed to quit then essentially your loop should say while that is not true or while not that condition so we know that the not is the exclamation mark if you just put the exclamation mark in, mark in front of your condition then your loop should run correctly and here's an example of that so if I want to write a loop that asks the user to keep typing in stuff until they type in the word quit well, what condition would make the user quit? Uh, or sorry, the loop quit. The loop would quit when the input equals quit. So if I want my loop to keep running, I just have to put a not in front of that. The uh, condition would be while not the input equals quit. And that's what our while loop says. It says while it's not the case that the input equals quit, then I should run my program and ask the user to type in more input at the end. Okay, so let's take a look at another sort of more concrete example of that. Um, here we have a program, it's a pretty simple guessing game where the computer asks the user to pick a random number and then the computer picks a random guess and then asks the user if they've typed in the correct answer. So if we just run it like this, there's no loops in this program yet, but if we just run it just to see what happens, let's see, is it 5? Yes it is. I'm so smart. Well, let's say we wanted our program to keep running until the user typed in yes. Um, so, first off, let's identify the part of our program that needs to repeat. In this case, all of this code here, uh, sorry, all of this code here needs to repeat. We need to generate a random guess and ask the user if it's correct. Now, what condition would uh, make that program quit? Well, the program should quit when the user types yes, or if the user types yes, or put it another way, if the input equals yes. So if we write that out as a condition, input dot equals yes, or y, then the condition for my loop I can get by just, again, negating that, putting a not in front of it. So that's what my while loop is going to look like. Well, it's not the case that input equals yes, then I need to put all that stuff in curly braces. Oops. Be nice if I indented things a little bit. And notice that if you use that CSD feature in JGrasp, you, you get this little circular symbol because again you're in a circular loop. So now if we run our program, is it 8? No. Okay, so it repeats itself because it's not the case that the input equals y. It's not that, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. Hey, you're right. Okay, so once we type y, think about what happens. We come back up to the top, input now equals y. So this equals uh, method call returns true, and then when we put the not in front of it, it becomes false. So this whole expression is false, so that tells my loop to quit. And then our program will just jump down to the bottom below our loop and keep running the rest of our program. 
Okay, so in this lesson, we've talked about the basic concept of looping. We've talked about what a while loop is and how it runs, and how you need to make sure that you don't create an infinite loop by mistake. And we talked about the syntax for creating while loops. Uh, and we also talked about some tips, and in particular, trying to identify the condition that would make your loop quit, and then simply negating that to decide what to put in the parentheses. Okay, you're all set.